Welcome back to the channel guys and today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make your own tactics. Just a quick note as well that this video is going to be part one. There's going to be a little sort of a mini series. I don't know how many episodes it's going to be. I don't want to commit to three, four, five. I don't know how many it's going to be. It's going to be at least two, probably at least three um, where we're going to see a, obviously we're going to build the tactic and then we're going to sort of like adapt it as we go on different players, different play styles. If we get promoted um, and all that sort of stuff. So I am going to walk you through the entirety of the thing from the start of the tactic to sort of fine tuning it to make it as good as it can possibly be. And also to recruit around the tactic, which is also quite crucial. So for this video, we are going to be taking over Santa Clara in Portugal. Now you might be thinking, why Santa Clara? So I wanted to manage Santa Clara for the last two years on FM, but for whatever reason, I've not got around to it. So I thought for this video, I'm finally going to do it. One of the reasons is they play on their own island in the Azor in Portugal, but also they were in Europe, but then the last season they got relegated out of nowhere after finishing in Europe the previous year to the second division in Portugal. So we started on this screen here, and this is where I usually start thinking about my tactic. So if we look at the start page, this page here I, has nothing to do with tactics, but if we go on to the next page, this bit here is where I start thinking about the tactic and how we're going to approach the season. So it says media prediction 12, which is odd because we've just been relegated. I'd have thought we'd been a bit higher, but it's fine. We probably have a good team for this level. Three-star reputation is really nice. Um, last season we got relegated, like it says there. Um, but we did, like I said before that, the last two or three seasons before that relegation, we were in Europe in the Conference League. So... We have a 12,000 seat stadium capacity, capacity stadium. We've got decent facilities, fairly basic youth recruitment. But tactically, we're looking at the media prediction of 12th and thinking middle of the pack is quite nice because what happens there usually is when we're playing away from home, almost every single team is going to try and attack us, especially the teams at the top. But even the teams at the bottom are going to fancy their chances against us. So away from home, we're going to be looking to play more balls in behind uh, pass into space, those types of things, right? More attacking duties, getting behind um, the, the defence. But at home, we're going to be looking to play more of a possession system against the teams near the bottom of the league. Now, we might stick to the away tactics against the teams at the top of the league, even when we're at home. I'll figure that out later on. But I wanted to let you know at the start of the video what I'm thinking about. And at the start, I like to glance over the media prediction just to see... What sort, of what sort of style we're going to attempt and what sort of things might be best. Because we aren't looking... I mean, if you guys want to play a tactic that suits you, that's fine. But I'm going to tell you how to make a tactic that suits your team and to have the best possible start in your season. And then we head into the next page. And this is what my chairman and the board want, the club's vision. So just having a look at this is quite surprising because in the first page, we saw a media prediction of 12th. But the board want us to get automatic promotion back to the top division, which makes more sense after the relegation out of nowhere and before that being in Europe. So the team must be quite strong for this division. And I think the media prediction might be wrong. It looks like it's wrong. So if that is the case, we're probably going to go back on what we said at the start. As we, as we can see, everything's always changing. I wanted to put everything into this video to, see where, to show you guys when think about where my head's been at throughout this entirety of the video and what I've been thinking about that what goes into making the tactics. So I think actually we'll be making more of a possession, slower based tempo system that gets the best out of the attacking players in our system. And also if we maybe got any flying wing backs or centre backs then could probably do with not as much protection in the second tier and get a bit few more men forward and score a few goals, right? We'll see if that's the case, but at the moment that's where I'm at. And then to the next page, it also says play entertaining football and sign Brazilian players. Both things I really like to do anyway. But the entertaining football part ties in to the previous part where I said we wanted to be a bit more attacking, um, a bit more gung-ho. Because hopefully, when we look at our players in a second, they are going to be able to cope with being a bit more attacking. Also, again, signing Brazilian players. Also fun. We're going to be looking to do that. So straight away, I'm going to get a scout out and we're going to send them to Brazil. So here we are on the team screen and straight away the first thing I'm going to do is sort by ability just to see the best players. Now Paulo Eduardo looks like a very good player that's out on loan. I don't know why he's out on loan. Uh, probably because they got relegated and he thinks he's better than this. He's playing for a team in the second division of Brazil which would suggest that he should have probably maybe stayed. Maybe he was homesick. I don't know. He's our best player. 
He's out on loan at the end of the season, so we're going to have to do without him. But maybe when he comes back, he might not be good enough for the top division. We'll see. Interesting one. Victor Bobson as well is out on loan in Korea at Die Dagu. Uh, he's also very good. He would have been nice to have, but it's fine. We don't have him. Lucas Suarez, though, Brazilian. As you can see, there's a lot of Brazilians in this team. In fact, more Brazilians probably than Portuguese players, which is amazing. Um, one Venezuelan there, a lonely Venezuelan and a lonely Uruguayan. So we are very South American and Portuguese based. We're a bit like wolves, aren't we, to be honest? Right, the best player is Lucas Suarez, who we have currently available to us. And he is a right back, wing back, midfield right and attacking right winger. Let's have a look at him. So he's very fast, he's got good stamina, good dribbling, not so great tackling and not so great positioning gets forward whenever possible and likes to run with the ball often. Now, depending on the rest of the team, he could be a very good right winger set as a winger or a fantastic wing back and we maybe look to be a bit more defensive behind him and let him sort of flourish in that wing back role. Basically say to him, don't defend me, just go and cause hassle in the opposition half. So that's Lucas Suarez. Then we're going to move on to our three and a half star players. There's a fair few of them, to be totally honest. We've got a striker. We've got four attacking midfielders, which is really nice. Uh, Bruno Almeida being maybe the best one. Uh, looks like a very good right winger. So this guy, just straight away, thoughts, just thoughts that are going on is that this guy is ag natural at the right wing with a left foot. So maybe this guy can come in off the wing, maybe an advanced playmaker drifting inside to these little pockets and then Suarez goes beyond him. Again, I don't know how that's how we're going to go, but I'm just thinking in my head, I'm trying to piece all these little puzzles together. That's how it's going to work, maybe. Almeida there. We've got Ricardinho, who's on the other side of things. Maybe he's an inside forward on that other side. Uh, the playmaker comes inside and then we've sort of got Ricardinho to join the striker, whoever plays there, because he's got good finishing. Uh, good off the ball and good pace. So, Ricardinho could be that left winger for us. We don't know yet. Paulo Henrique is our centre-back, our best centre-back. He is very good. He could also play left-back, to be fair, if we need him to. Uh, we'll see what's available to us, because obviously we'll be signing players too. Um, at the minute, though, he looks probably like a left centre-back. A little bit small, but yeah, thinking left centre-back. We'll see. Rildo is out on loan again. Uh, at Porto Menense in the top division. So he would have been nice for us, but we don't have him. So that's a shame. Gabriel Silva is five stars, 21. Very good player. Probably our most valuable player, actually. And this guy looks like he's also a winger slash attacking midfielder slash potential striker. Okay, so we've got a good, good attacking threat. Gabriel Batista, our goalkeeper here, just looks like a nice standard goalkeeper. Uh, nothing amazing, um, nothing bad. Just, yeah, he's going to be our goalkeeper, I think. Good uh, leadership as well, which is always nice. And then here we are, we've got our best striker, Rafael Martins. He's 34, so he's probably going to be lacking pace. Actually, he's not too bad at pace. Uh, 12, not too bad at pace, not too slow, I should have said. 12 pace, 12 acceleration, shoots from distance, shoots with power. I do like that. Um, we're going to look at, maybe he's a link-up striker. Um, maybe he's a bit of everything. We, he's quite versatile for us. Only one season, though. I don't think he's going to cut it in the division above. But for this season, he's probably going to be our main guy up front. Moving into DM now, and these players are our three-star players, Matthias Serrara. We do like, I do like to see what we've got in terms of the, uh, the squad, so then I can piece it together. I don't want to sell these guys because I don't want as much... I want as least transfers as possible in the first season, especially when we've got a good squad. So, Matthias Serrara is a DM, but he does have gets forward whenever possible. So, maybe he's with a 2DM system or maybe he's a centre midfielder. I don't think I want my lone DM to be getting forward whenever possible. We'll have a look at that. Um, but a ball-winning midfielder, he might be. Let's have a look. Who else we got? We got Pedro Pacheco centre-back, right-footed centre-back. A bit taller, this one. So, yeah, he looks like he's going to be our centre-back. Good passing as well, which could be a ball-playing centre-back. Um, who else we got? Kl Klisman. Klisman is another attacking midfielder. Again, left-footer. Tries killer balls often. So, he could be back up to, um, is it Almeida on the right-hand side? Again, I'm not sure yet what we're doing. I'll build a tactic soon. But we're just having a look to see what's about. Another right-back here in Diogo Kalila. He's also a very, very good right wing back. Not as good, obviously, as Suarez, but for this level, he's definitely a good first choice. So, again, we might push Suarez up the pitch. We'll see. 
uh, David Bruno here, like another right back. We're absolutely inundated with right backs. So I might sell this guy. Don't really need him. He's 31 too. I could free up that wage to maybe go and get a left back in because it doesn't look like we've got a really good left back apart from, where is he? Um, Paulo Henrique. And I think I want him for centre back. We'll see. Luis Rocha here, 36 year old centre back. We might use him for one season. Very good mentals, very good defending uh, attributes, heading, marking, and tackling. Good jumping. Not much pace as you'd expect at 36. We'll see. It will depend because if I want to play more attacking, I might need a bit more pace in my back line. So that's something else I might have to look at. MT, just straight up MT, is another left footed attacking midfielder. He can also play left back. Interesting. Um, he could also be a flying left back. Not great at defending. So we'll see. Ooh, okay. A very interesting, very interesting team, this. Vinicius Lopez is a winger slash striker. Again, he's got good pace about him. He's just okay. Um, Adriano, defensive midfielder. I like this guy. Six foot two. Not strong, but everywhere else he's quite good. Got another starter growing to on his uh, potential. He's wanted by a few decent teams as well, which is nice. Gives me a lot of hope for him. Uh, Ronaldo is a striker, a young striker. He's natural on the right wing, but he's got 15 finishing. That is very interesting. So maybe an inside forward. We've got options here, guys. 15 passing too. This guy's quite good. I like him. He'll be used quite a lot, I'd imagine. Sydney Lima, three-star centre-back, six foot. This looks like our best centre-back, despite what the game's telling me. He's 14 jumping reach, but also got a bit of pace. Decent mentals. Again, 14 tackling, 14 heading, and can pass a little bit, which I quite like. So, yeah, Sydney Lima is going to be our centre-back, I would imagine. And Mar Marcos Diaz is a 37-year-old goalkeeper, backup goalkeeper. That's absolutely fine. Good personality as well, which is nice. And then we're looking at our fringe players. Sema Velasquez is probably going to be sold. Not very good physically. Declining. And also a wage that we can also invest other areas. Rodrigo Valente looks like another attacking midfielder. So it looks to me like we've got defensive midfielders and attacking midfielders. We've not got much in terms of central midfielders and we've also not got much in terms of strikers. So we've had a little look at the squad and then now what I want to do, I don't want to get confused by these guys out on loan. So I'm just going to go to filter and then at the bottom behind my camera, you can't see it, it says not at club. I'm going to tick that so they disappear. So now I know what I'm dealing with, right? We don't want any clutter on the screen. People that are available to play, we want them in this list. We don't want all these other loanies they're out there thinking they're better than Santa Clara. Well, they're not. So they're gone. See you later. Out of sight, out of mind. Next, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to go to the league and then we're going to go to the season preview. This tells us quite a lot. It tells us that we are the best team in the league. We have the best players, pretty much. And we have the best goalkeeper in the league, which is Gabriel Batista. We have the best centre-back, or one of the best centre-backs, Enrique. We have the best right-back, which is our best player, uh, Suarez. We have three of all three strikers, Gabriel Silva, Bruno Almeida and Rafael Martins. We have got the best front three in the league. So we are going to try and take advantage of that. I am going to play with a high pressing, um, aggressive system, I think. We're going to go really attacking and try and score some goals because I think that's what suits us. Um, we're going to have Suarez bombing on. We're going to have our right winger cutting inside. Um, and then we're going to maybe we'll have our left back a little bit more um, conservative, right? Because we want to get this guy involved. We want to look for the overlap on this side, I think. We're looking to get him on the ball as much as possible. Get some assists for Lucas Suarez and these three in the box for some goals. So now we know who the main actors in the team are. We've got those six there. We need five supporting actors that are going to allow them to play their best game and get the most out of their strengths. So we're going to create our own style because that is the whole purpose of this video. We're going to make our own tactic from scratch. And just for now... As a starter, I think I'm going to go with 4-2-3-1 DMAM wide because I like the look of the two defensive midfielders. And if we're going to have our right-back Suarez flying forward like I want him to, then I think we need two DMs to sort of counteract that. Right, obviously one of them is going to be a bit more attacking than the other. We might even have a half-back to split the centre-backs and maybe push this guy up even more. Again, not sure just yet. We're going to see how that works. But we do want to see where our six best players are going to go into the team. And then we can see what fits around it. We do also have 217 grand to spend and 9,000 in the wage budget, which is nice. But I have noticed that we've sold Hidemasa Marita to Sporting, who is a fantastic Japanese midfielder. And there's a clause on him that I want to cash out. I can get 715k right now, taking our transfer budget, 
up to a million. And even if I don't want to use any signings, I might want to put him to loans or free transfers to the wage budget. So I'm going to take that. I'm also going to take this one to Lincoln. We sold him to Fenerbahce by the looks of things. And also I get another 215k, which is fantastic. So now we're actually looking at a transfer budget of 1.1 million or 1.15 million. And again, obviously, it's still nine grand in wage budget. But if we put that across, obviously, it'll not let us just yet. But as we advance through the season, uh, through the preseason, it will let us change that over. But nine grand's decent. So as you can see, I have sorted by the ability. And all these players here are the best players in my team. Now, I've got them into the formation. The only positions I do need is a left back and a defensive midfielder right centre. Now, I think Serginho here, he can do a job in DM. He... He's only competent, so we can retrain him there. Um, but he's a nice little deep-line playmaker, which I like. I like a guy to get the ball off the back four. So I think Serginho is going to drop into that defensive midfield right centre. I don't, however, have a left-back that I'm happy with. So I'm going to go out and get a left-back. Uh, we'll find one and we'll bring one in, no problem. But if we just want to go to the tactics screen really fast, and we're going to change these roles, because these aren't the roles that we want, right? Um, we're going to start from the top, because I feel like we defend from the front, so that's how we're going to do it. Um, and then the roles might change as we go back. Uh, so what we're going to do is with Rafael Martins, we're going to have a quick look at him. And we can see his attributes there. I'm going to take that off because it's a little bit confusing. He can do a bit of everything, right? He's not bad at anything. You could probably set him as any role and he'd do okay. But pressing forward, I don't really want. He's got 10 work rate. I don't want him running around if he's not going to run around, right? I don't want to ask him to do that if he's not really going to do it. Target man, not a massive fan. He's only got 10 jumping reach. Good bravery, but only 10 jumping reach. Advance forward, maybe he could do that. He's only got 12 off the ball and 12 pace. Um, but what I do like is his strength. So because we don't want target forward with that, I think what I'm going to settle on is deep line forward. Now, the reason for that, obviously, is strength. I do like that. And by default, deep line forward does have... If we look at it, hold up ball, right? Now, I want him to hold up the ball. But also, another reason for this is Gabriel Silva here, who was our attacking midfielder, is going to be a shadow striker because he's more of a striker. Now, if we look at him, he is only two and a half stars a shadow striker, although we aren't really bothered about the star ratings. But if we look at him, I want to get the most out of him because not only is he worth the most, in case if we go up, we can maybe sell him to fund our entire transfer window. So we're always thinking about these things, right? We've got to be thinking about the short term, the medium term, and the long term. So I want Gabriel Silva in the first team. He doesn't get in at left wing. He won't get in at right wing because he's a right winger and he will stifle the space that Suarez is looking to bomb into. So I don't want to put him on the right wing for that reason. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, because he can play striker and he's got decent pace um, and dribbling and uh, technique, I do want him as a shadow striker in there. Now, I know he hasn't got the work rate maybe to play as a shadow striker because they do like to put in a lot of work. But sometimes you can't have everything in the Portuguese second division. We're not Man City. So I'm going to stick him as a shadow striker. And he should, as the season goes on, get better in that role. And also, because the deep line forward of Rafael Martins is going to be dropping in as the as a strong guy, he's going to look to get beyond him with that pace, right? So we're looking to couple that together. In defensive midfield as well, Serrara is looking like a ball-winning midfielder. That's his best attributes. But also, he has gets forward whenever possible. Now, I want to allow him to do that, and he's going to do that anyway because it's a trait. So it will override. So I want a ball-winning midfielder support. I don't want him on defend. I don't want him to be the guy that stays at the back. I want him to go and win the ball and then join in and sort of offer protection behind the front four, right? And as we do that, this guy's probably going to be around this position. So we're always thinking about how to dis uh, to protect the defenders. Now, we're putting Serginho on this side as a deep line playmaker defend because not only is that his best role, because he's got good passing and stuff, but also on defend, he's going to sit in this area and allow Suarez to bomb up the pitch. So that is all working as, well, hopefully, in theory, we're going to show you that that's going to be working uh, all together and they're the reasons why i've chose that and now we're going to go to the wide positions and pick what's the best there so out wide we have ricardinho and almeida now ricardinho is a right footer on the left wing and almeida is a left footer on the right wing we need to take that into consideration but another thing we need to take into consideration is serginio and almeida there's going to be a decently sized gap not a massive gap but a decent sized gap because he's on defend and he's quite high up the pitch. So for that, we are going to put him on a support duty. Now, 
I think the best role for him is inverted winger support. Now, the game is also saying it is two. But then on the left wing, because Matthias Serrara is going to probably taking up this spot in the, on the average, um, average position, we're going to probably be looking to be a bit more aggressive with Ricardinho. And we're going to put him on an inside forward attack. Because now what we've got is we've got two big goal threats in Gabriel Silva, who's taking this spot when it's vacated, and also Ricardinho, who's taking the spot from the left-hand side when it's vacated, but also to get out the way of Serrara when he inevitably bombs up the pitch. So hopefully, it's all going to work in tandem. Like I said, Almeida's going to be on support to offer options to Suarez, but also he's going to come inside, so Suarez bombs down. Now, we might need to pop into the player instructions at some point after we've seen a few matches, we might want Almeida to stay narrower, give Suarez a bit more space on that wing. But for now, I'm liking the look of this. Um, at left back, we're probably just going to stick with a full back on support to sort of sort of just protect the defence a little bit because Suarez is going to be bombing on. Serrara is going to be sort of not really attacking, but he's going to be looking to win the ball in these areas. So we don't need another full back to be bombing forward again. As well, so we're probably just going to leave it on fullback support. Now that might change depending if there's a massive gap on this flank here. If there's a massive gap between these two and this guy. I might push him forward. I might still leave him on fullback support, but I might just put get further forward on, just to sort of bridge that gap. We're going to see in matches what happens and what goes on and what we might want to change. Also, when we come to this screen, especially if we're starting a save or we're expecting wholesale changes or making our own tactic like we are today, then we want to be looking at tactical on here. We don't want anything else because we want the most out of team cohesion and tactical familiarity. So onto the team instructions. The first thing I'm going to say is don't overload the team instructions to start with because what we want to do is we want to see what's working and what's not. And a lot of things obviously interchange and intertwine with each other. So some things could be the problem and we don't know what it is. So what we don't want to do, in my opinion, again, Great tactics is we don't want to just take everything and then just see what happens, right? I want to think about this and it makes sense to go with less instructions to start with, then we can add more or even just tweak some as we go on. So I am going to start with positive um, because I think by and large we are going to be the best team uh, in the majority of the games, right? If we're away from home against teams near the top, I might drop to balance, but in general, I think positive is the one for us. So in possession, what we want to do is, I think, we want to play out of defence. That's something I want to do. We are good enough to do that. I don't want to be seeing aimless passes going forward. Um, so we are going to play out of defence. I also don't think we need to pass into space because there's not going to be much space in behind the opposition's back line because we are the best team. So most teams are going to come up and set up against us. It's quite defensive. So there's not going to be much space to pass it into. So I'm going to take that off. We might put it on if, it, if we're not doing it enough, if we're not playing enough through balls. But... We're going to leave that off for now. We're going to let the guys decide whether it's the right thing to do. What I do want to do, however, is Lucas Suarez is on wing-back attack on the right wing. So I want to look for him down the overlap. So I do want overlap right. We don't want overlap left on because we've established before that our left-back is going to be a bit more conservative than the right-hand side. But I do, however, want my players to be looking for Suarez down that wing because a lot of assists are hopefully going to come down that side um, and obviously in the box we're going to hopefully have Rafael Martins, our deep line forward who's laid the ball off and then got back in the box we're going to have our shadow striker and we're going to have our inside forward on the opposite side all coming in, crashing the box and hopefully tapping the crosses in so the passing directness and the tempo I'm going to leave it as is right now and we're going to change based on either the game or what's happening long term in the matches if I see a trend and we're maybe playing a bit too quick um, then I'm going to lower the tempo but for now I'm going to leave it slightly higher I don't think that's going to be I don't think I'd want it higher, um, but I think slightly higher is absolutely fine. We're not going to counter-attack as well, which should help us there. So we're going to be playing at an elevated, slightly elevated tempo, but we're not going to go crazy with counter-attack and extremely high. We're going to leave it just like that for now. Like I said, it could all be changing. We'll come back at part two after I've played some games, and I'll show you guys what's been happening, what, we've, what I've noticed, and how we've changed for the better. But for now, I think that's absolutely fine. We're going to leave all this stuff on. I do potentially like run at defense on our tactic i like the look of that but our wide guys are already going to have dribble more dribble more dribble more and he's going to have hopefully dribble more and we're going to make him run run wide with the ball we're also going to make him stay wider as well because we want that we want him to just be bombing down that wing we don't even he can defend obviously we want him to defend but i want to him to sort of win tackles up here i don't want him really that deep 
Um, so Gino's going to sort of drop in for that. So we might, on Pacheco actually, we might make him stay wider when we have the ball. Just to hopefully plug that gap. If we lose it, he's already out there. So we're going to try that. Nothing wrong with that. But for now, I think that is something that we want to look to do. Just leave it at that. Not too much. We also might play a bit fairly narrower just to give him more space at right back. But for now, I think that is okay. With not too much instructions, the team are quite good for this level as well, remember. So we want to let them make majority of the decisions because we're playing against teams vastly inferior a lot of the time. If we come in here, I do want us to counter press though. I do like the idea of that. I think we've got good players. So we do want to like lean into the fact that we have got good players. We don't just want to be really, really, really conservative. We want to be making the most out of that. So I do want to counter press. Um, I don't want to counter or hold shape. We'll leave that. But when we we also wanted to play out of defence. So I think for that, I'm going to go to the centre-backs. Um, we could go full-backs, but I sort of want Suarez to be on his, on his way, on his bike, as soon as possible. So we're also going to go to centre-backs. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to let him roll it out or kick it. It's totally up to him. And also... Uh, distribute quickly or slowly he can decide it's absolutely fine he's the best goalkeeper in the league apparently so i'm gonna let, let him make some decisions on himself so now we're looking at out of possession now the first thing i know is mid block and standard right there i think we want to change that uh, because we're positive we are going to be slightly more aggressive out of possession anyway if i just change that to balance really fast and then go back in there it actually does change the standard press um but if i go back to positive by default it is actually a slightly more often trigger press. So your mentality, as attacking as it is, the more attacking it goes, actually by default makes the trigger press a lot more uh, by default, right? So just keep an eye on that. Obviously, if you go to positive, it's also standard. But if you go to balanced, it's also standard. But if you go to positive, like I said, it is slightly more. So keep that in mind too. There's little changes that you might not notice under the hood, or not under the hood, but... You can't see them, they're out of sight, so they might be out of mind sort of thing. So I just thought I'd draw your attention to that. I think, because we've got a nice little team, and a good team, I think we're going to go for a high press. I do think our players are going to be better off with that. Especially with the counter press, I think it lends quite well. Also, because we've got two DMs, and I don't want a big gap between the front four and the back six, I am going to drop, uh, I'm going to push the line up. As you can see there, it does push up all the players closer to the striker so i do think that is good it'll also help with more possession so the players will be closer together um that way um pressing i think i might leave it slightly more often to start with i don't think i want to go mental with that it will be slight quite high anyway because of the high press the positive mentality and the higher defensive line so i don't think we need to go overboard with that i'm going to leave it slightly more often and um, if i need to i'll go into player instructions and press more or less depending on what i see in games that will probably come into part two of the next episode and we'll probably be looking at more like player instructions and individual instances of where i needed to change that and what i should have done and what i did do and if it worked and hopefully it did work because obviously when we're building a tactic not everything's going to work i'm not saying that this tactic is going to win the league unbeaten score 300 goals and hardly concede any i don't know what it's going to do but i'm telling you guys and showing you guys what i'm thinking about when i'm making it and hopefully the explanations behind each decision make sense to you so you can put that thought process into your save now you're welcome to plug the tactic straight into your team but I'm basing this off my team and I also want you guys to think about what's best for your team. And hopefully when you build your own tactic, it gives you a better sense of satisfaction when you do well with it. So for this, I'm going to leave everything as it is just there on the right hand side. We don't want to step up more or drop off more. I don't think there's a need for that. We're, we're absolutely fine doing what we're doing. We can decide. Again, we've got good players so they can decide. And uh, We might put more get stuck in on the attacking players if we're a high pressing team like we're going to be. Um, I might want the players in the front end of the pitch to try and win the ball and uh, maybe capitalise on a few mistakes or a few people dallying on the ball and, and, and dwelling on it. So I might do that, but I think I'll do that in player instructions. Uh, prevent short goalkeeper distribution is an interesting one. So usually with a team that's really good, I'd probably like to do that. But I have noticed that my team aren't the tallest. Even my centre-back, Enrique, isn't the tallest with 12 jumping reach. So... I'm going to actually allow teams to play out and then hopefully we can press them once they play out. What I don't want is us to press up, they to kick it, them to kick it over us because they've got no choice but to do it and we've forced it and then they win the header and then they're through because that's not playing to our strength. So I'm going to leave that off for now. I might put it back on. These are all subject to change, but for now, that's staying off. 
We're also, because we're not tall as well, I'm also also thinking in my mind we might want to stop crossers. We'll see about that. We're not. I'm not sure yet, um, but I think stop crossers might be something we do end up doing. Um, I'm, I might actually, the more I'm thinking about it, I think I'm going to start with that. It's not something that we're fantastic at, especially as well, our goalkeeper, if you remember, if I click on him, he's also got command of area eight. So that tied into the fact that my defenders aren't the tallest, I think stop crosses does make sense. So we are going to do that. If my goalkeeper was good in the air, I think I'd have left that off. But those two things together, like I said, trying to explain my decisions, I'm going to make stop crosses a thing. So I think that is the tactic. I'm going to bring in the left back. That's episode one. I don't know how long it's going to be, but if you like the video, please like it. If there's any questions that I've missed or anything you want to talk about, put them in the comments and we'll have a nice little back and forth for discussion. I'm always up for tactical discussions, always. If you want to talk on Twitter about stuff like that as well, that's down below. But if you want to leave a subscription on the channel, leave a subscription on the channel. That would be amazing. We're so close to 3,000. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you then. Goodbye. Thank you.